With so many freaking crazy units and vision cards being thrown in your face, it can be hard to hold on to your Vizior. So today, sit back and relax and join me, the editor man, because it is once again time to take a look into the future and see what's coming up in War of the Visions. Here is the basic roadmap that we should have in front of us. Keep in mind that any of this can be moved around, but we are getting all of this stuff pretty soon, no matter what, whether it be a week or two earlier or later. Dark Bahamut is where we are right now, and you all know how I feel about these dark cost 90 vision cards. They are very good, but can be very expensive. But if you are a light or dark element main, then you should at least consider picking it up. Especially if you are a light element main who picked up the new stern. You also get a very good Esper, which is coincidentally the best in slot for the new stern. If nothing else, you can try the first discounted step. Who knows, you might get lucky. Oh yeah. Next up should be this heavily depressed looking dude. Reagan is a non-limited cost 100 ice element unit who is kind of a bruiser. And he has a lot of cool things in his kit. Currently, meta relevant ice element teams tend to feature Snow, Alaya, Velus and Eliza. You could incorporate Reagan in place of Snow in there, but if you already have a maxed out Snow, then I'm not sure if Reagan is super important for you. Remember, cost 100 units can be a pain and expensive to get. You could try to make an Ice Slash team alongside Laswell, Gilgamesh and or Orin, but again, if you already have the other top tier element units, then it feels like a different game plan from the usual one, but not necessarily a better one. The TMR is pretty bleh too. You could try out some kind of fire and ice team with him, that could be something. I mean, it's your Vizior, you can do whatever you want. But for me, Reagan is for ice element mains who don't have snow and need a really good bruiser on their team. Or maybe they do have snow and need two bruisers for some reason. Now, although Reagan might not be a must pull for me, the vision card which should come right after him does look really good. Elemental Chain Resistance is a relatively new concept for the game, but it can be really important when going up against mono element teams which are everywhere. It also gives you a good amount of slash attack resistance, again very nice and the critical damage is a cute icing on the cake. Reagan and OG Rain should get a global buff on this card too, if you care about that. Taking a look at who can actually use this card, besides Reagan and ignoring the ones we haven't talked about yet, King Bradley and the new Stern are both there. Could be a fun, weird team in there, perhaps? But there are quite a few other options too, if you want to experiment with them. As far as I'm concerned, this card is worth picking up. But just as it is with all job-based cards, you might want to have a plan for a team beforehand. As they can be pretty annoying to use compared to mono-element vision cards. Next up would be Vega, a semi-limited, cost 100 lightning element unit and a very good one too. Another unit which falls under the category of Bruiser. The lightning element has been struggling as of late even with the arrival of Alphonse, but Vega could be a pretty big help for lightning players. Vega is a part of the Apostles of the Void and the new Crystal Warriors. The opportunity to get them comes around every once in a while, but your best bet to get a specific one is when the unit first shows up. Even then, the banners are pretty bad and you can only pity with the medals, which is just terrible. But if you are a lightning main and you want to be a meta baby, then you might want to go after Vega. Master Quarrel is up next and this will be a vision card plus Esper combo and we haven't seen a lot of them outside the dark double cost vision cards like Dark Bahamut. The Esper is a lightning slash type which should go well with Vega if you don't have any other options like Scorpion Sentinel for example. The card itself is okay, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that it isn't as valuable to me as the last card we talked about. If you plan on running Vega in a mono lightning team, then I think you have more than capable options in the mono element cards already. Unless you don't have the mono element lightning cards or unless you have a plan for some weird job based team featuring Vega. At some point, you should be able to get your filthy hands on Valentine Miranda, a non limited cost 70 light element unit who could be a very capable partner for the new Stern. The fact that he is cost 70 makes her even better for cost limited environments. But that sort of thing is for the meta babies out there. But she will be a non-limited unit for us, so you don't have to pull for her. You could just get her randomly, later. But if you only care about light element units and if you get hot and bothered every time a new light unit shows up, then she might be worth picking up for you, you weirdo. <laughs> and finally, Final Fantasy VI should be the next big collaboration event, so if you are interested in these characters, then you better start saving up, my friend. 
the big ticket item for this collaboration would be the big, bad, handsome clown himself, Kefka. He will be a cost 100 fire element mage type of unit. He can hit really hard and he has a couple of nasty status effects too. If you went out of your way to get Roy Mustang and his vision card, like me, then Kefka is a must pull unit for you. He'll go with Roy Mustang like high quality peanut butter and hard cash. But if you don't have Roy, or if you don't have any interest in the fire element, then you can skip him pretty safely. We can pull for every dang cost 100 unit that shows up after all, otherwise we would be the clowns, if we aren't already. But always remember, pull for the units that you really like and you will always have fun. Kefka will bring another job based card with him and it should only be a consideration if you pulled for Kefka himself. The card goes well with Roy Mustang too, so again, they will go together really well. Summer Mommy Helena is there too, what more could you want? But let's not forget about the old FF6 units. Celeste was a great tank and one could argue she could still be a pretty good one. The thing is, if you are a water element main, then you don't really have any other options when it comes to tanks. And Celeste has Eunuch, which if you don't know can straight up absorb certain kinds of magic attacks. Kafka will really hate Celeste, so that's kinda cool, considering the lore of Final Fantasy VI. But the fire versus water matchup is already in the favor of the water team anyway. And to be fair, the water element is still, as it has been for a while now, in a very weird place. As far as the meta is concerned anyway. If you already have Celeste, then you can just take her to level 140 and have an easy time. And if you are a water element main, then you do want to have Celeste on your roster. Other than that, I can't recommend that anyone else should pull for her. Terra is a pretty underrated unit and can surprise you given the opportunity. Another fire element mage unit and I'm sure there are many fans of this girl out there. But unfortunately, she will be pretty difficult to use alongside Roy and Kefka because their vision cards do not benefit Terra. Terrible indeed, but what can you do? She can still find a place on fire element teams though. And she does have her own card, Omen, and it is a simple fire element card. And I really like it. But will she light the world on fire? Mm, probably not. She can destroy evasion units pretty quickly though. Other than that, I could say she is very good, but not great. If you like Terra, then I think she can be a very worthwhile unit for you. But if you're only interested in being a big meta baby, then perhaps you should move along. Locke should be a free unit for everyone and I don't think he is worth building, if you haven't built him already. Light evasion isn't really much of a thing anymore and it's especially not worth building Locke from scratch for it. If you already have him, great, if not, I would pass on him entirely. And that is where I'll stop for today. Remember, any of this stuff can be moved around, Gumi could even bundle a unit and vision card together in the same week. And of course, there is the possibility of the demonic homeless man showing up at some point too. I hope the crystals would protect us from that. Personally, I'll be saving up for Kefka and his card and maybe I'll pick up the Reagan card too. What about you guys? What future stuff are you saving for? Did I miss something important? Do let me know everything in the comments. Well then, have a great day everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!